Peter, you here? Good, 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 good. Come inside. Yes, it's nice to meet you. My name is Dr. Otto Octavius. Now, uh, Professor Connor said you were brilliant. Thought you might make a good lab assistant here. He also said that you were lazy, undependable, and had a penchant for not showing up to class. Well, let me tell you something, young man, that is not going to fly in this facility. Are we under, are we clear? Good, good, good. I'm gonna show you around the lab a little bit. Uh, maybe you can learn a few things before we get started. Now, this lab is funded by Oscorp, but it is under my complete directive. And I am in complete charge here. Are we clear? Good. Good. So what I say goes. If I say that you need to be here at 8 a.m., I want to see you at 8 a.m. I don't care about Manhattan downtown traffic. You can plan that out beforehand. I need you here. Understood? Now, in here, we have the reactor. Now, this is a thermofusion reactor that is constantly engaged with a new type of vibranium, vibranium core. Still can't say it. Those Wakanda words kind of trip me up a little bit, if you know what I mean. But this vibranium core is very, very special because it sort of defies the laws of physics. We're still not quite clear on what its purpose is. However, I think that I have found a way to safely handle it. See this? This is enormous. This was the prototype that I was building for a regulator for a control of autonomous while still being controlled mechanical limbs. Now these mechanical limbs are going to allow me to directly interact with the vibranium core without, well, melting into a pile of goo. Now these vibranium uh, reactions are not just hot, not just radioactive, but they also seem to be accessing extra energy from what we can only assume to be from another plane of existence. Now I know that sounds like science fiction, but uh, have you seen what's happening on the streets these days? Uh, Chitauri ships flying in, big green men. It's interesting times that we live in, and I want someone like you, someone I can depend on, to be here. So, this is what's going to happen. At the display, tomorrow, I am going to fully integrate my nervous system using this new chip. Now, the one that I have is much, much smaller, of course. This is, I mean, what is this, 1977? Come on. Uh, I'm going to have a small chip. It's going to be inserted into the back of the base of my spine. And this is going to allow me to control these mechanical limbs while at the same time allow them autonomous motion. And this way they will be able to anticipate my needs. The longer I wear them, the more they will become an extension of myself. There have been extensive studies in this uh, field and what they have found is that the human mind is able to adapt to new limbs with amazing alacrity. So I think that I will be able to control all four of these simultaneously while still being able to maintain my own personal personality and control. The key is in that chip. It's a biofeedback regulator that allows me to do so. So here's where you come in, Peter. I need to make sure that everything in the lab is as it should be. You know, that means no one is going to be there that's not supposed to be. No one who doesn't have one of those lanyards around your neck is, is allowed inside. And certainly if you see any hint of superheroes or supervillains, any of that sort of thing, that you hit the red button and let me know so that we can cancel the experiment. Well, it's an understandable question. Why are we not testing this thoroughly before the display tomorrow? 
Unfortunately, that's the way science works these days. Uh, if we do not continue our funding from Oscorp, we're going to be shut down. Uh, this is a multi-billion dollar project that will be lost in a heartbeat. I can't have that. This is my life's work. There is nothing that I won't do to ensure its success. Now the problem is this. If anything should go wrong, there is the potential that these limbs could attempt autonomous motion without my consent. And if so, you are going to need to know how to shut that down. To do so, the only relatively safe way, other than killing yours truly, and hopefully that wasn't on your mind, is detonating a small EMP device nearby. Now, that of course will knock out all electronic equipment, but most importantly, it will also knock out this chip. So I'm going to need you to be on the ready. How fast are your reflexes? Not bad? Good, good, good. So, I want you to be aware of a few other projects we're working on here in the lab. We have a set of potential uh, rescue wings that we are putting together. Uh, we call them Project Vulture uh, because of the, the way that they look and uh, the way that you're intended to swoop down and save people who are in danger, uh, who may potentially be killed otherwise. So you're raising up those corpses, but of course, instead of feeding on them, you're saving them. It's a little morbid, I know, but let me tell you, the stockholders love these little names. Now, if you'll uh, turn your attention over here, uh, we have the Hover Glider. This was, of course, unfortunately stolen by the Green Goblin a few years ago, but we are looking at ways to perfect it. We think that this could be used as a all-terrain vehicle and could help to deliver um, safe uh, equipment to people who are in dangerous situations. Imagine those in a flood. You could just zip right across the water and deliver emergency supplies, take people out. The applications are limitless. And yes, uh, these limbs, these four limbs that I am looking at, has multiple multiple uses beyond what I am planning on using them for. Imagine if you were able to perform surgery all by yourself. If your mechanical limbs were able to hold the suture, were able to hand you the scalpel, were able to run a probe simultaneously. Imagine one person, what that would mean to hospitals. They would be able to dramatically increase the amount of staff that are now being put towards uh, maintaining care with the patients, where one doctor would be able to perform a surgery safer and faster. Can you imagine such a thing? That is what we are doing here in my lab, and that is why I need your absolute commitment. Do I have it, Peter? All right. Now, Dr. Connor said that you are a bright lad, so I want you to tell me, I'm not kidding, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Okay, okay, I understand that this should be fully tested first. We've already gone past that. Past that, past that. Think of the science. I want to know, what am I doing wrong? Interesting. You are correct that there is the potential that if I was caught in a biofeedback loop, these limbs, uh, the way that they are integrated into my spinal column, could actually become fused with my person. That would be bad. <laughs> We're just going to have to make sure that doesn't happen, don't we? So what I'm going to need is someone who's got my back, Peter. Someone who, despite being an unpaid intern, has a bright future ahead of them. Someone who can help save me if necessary. Can I count on you, Peter? Good, good. Now, are you going to be here 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, rain or shine, even if there's Manhattan trouble, even if the rhino is going downtown and wrecking buildings. You're going to be here to help me. Good, good, good. We're going to do great things together, you and I, Peter. I have a feeling this is the beginning of a beautiful relationship.